Welcome to The Market is Open. Check out our website, themarketisopen.com. Today we're going to be talking about a podcast that Elon Musk recently did with an investment firm called ARK Investments. It's called On the Road to Full Autonomy with Elon Musk. Uh, so on the agenda today, we're going to be talking about it. We're going to start with ARK Investments uh, investment thesis. And they basically interview Elon Musk. Uh, they're a big fan of Tesla, obviously. And he talks about the growth in EVs. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and how Tesla is going to grow as well. And the main focus of the podcast was around their uh, Tesla's autonomous strategy for, for their self-driving cars. Also, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're looking to grow our investing community and would really appreciate your support in growing our channel. So during the podcast, ARK Investment says that innovation is mispriced in the public markets. Um, which is really interesting actually. Elon Musk act totally agrees with what they have to say about this. And it's interesting because as the markets are sort of moving uh, to passive investing with all of the uh, index funds, there's a huge uh, investment in index funds. Some people think that there's like a, an index fund bubble because there's such gigantic investment in these funds which are very passive. People don't look at their investments and they don't really watch what they're doing. There's also a bunch of ETFs that sort of group together a bunch of stocks together and they all trade together. So if you want to invest in one particular stock, for example, the, the ETF which contains that stock could be actually moving the stock price uh, more than the investors actually invested into that specific stock. So ARK Investments is really saying that innovation is mispriced because the companies that are actually doing all of the innovating are sort of grouped in together with all of these other stocks which I guess aren't innovating and they're not really getting the, the price to earnings ratio and the, the PE multiples that they deserve. And it's also pretty interesting on the next slide I'll touch on it that they talk about people being linear thinkers instead of sort of exponential thinkers like they don't see exponential trends. Uh, so I'll talk a little bit about more but that's sort of one of the reasons why they might not uh, appreciate companies that have innovation because they're not really expecting uh, an exponential growth in, in any company. Everybody's sort of looking at the, the linear path for, for things and modeling it out linearly. Okay, so ARK Investments, they say that they didn't really want to talk about uh, EVs or the growth of the market in EVs or, or how many Model 3s Tesla's going to produce, but they do uh, ask Elon his his overall thoughts on, on the market and, and ARK Investments does make this prediction uh, that currently uh, or last year, there were 1.3 million cars that were electric sold in, uh, in the world. And in five years from now, by 2023, they believe uh, that 26 million EVs uh, will be sold uh, in the world. So that's actually a 20-fold increase in the number of electric vehicles, which they say is, is huge. It's actually about one-third to one-quarter of the, the total global yearly production. And so they ask Elon, like given uh, the battery capacity uh, continues to grow and the cost continues to decline, so with those metrics alone basically, if the production capacity was there, uh, would that many cars be sold? Uh, and Elon says, uh, yeah, like they might be off by like a year or two, but not by much, and, and that's probably what's going to end up happening. And ARK Investments calls this their top-down approach, and they say that that's, that's huge, that's gigantic, that's a very uh, nice trend. Uh, to be investing in. And it's also interesting because in order for this to occur, the industry would basically have to grow exponentially from 1.3 million cars to 26 million cars over the next five years. Whereas again, they say people are linear thinkers. They don't think, they don't expect that to happen. They think, okay, well, we're 1.3 uh, million cars this year. Maybe next year we'll be, if, if you're growing at a million cars per year, we'll be at 2 million and then next year we'll be at 3 million and then 4 million. So we might be at 5 million in five years from now, but but they're estimating 26 million, which is an exponential curve, sort of, uh, I guess, the S curve, because eventually uh, it'll level out at, at a certain point, but it's definitely exponential uh, for the middle part. Also, from an investment standpoint, I believe ARK Investments is probably the most bullish uh, Tesla shareholders I've, I've seen. So again, like I don't like to look at the most bullish and the most bearish investors, but we can uh, look at what they're going to say. They have a price target of 700 to 4,000, actually it was 4,000 some of their investors were talking about, which they say is pretty conservative and they base it on Tesla selling 1.6 million units in the year. So that's that's actually multiple times where Tesla is right now, but it's actually not that much for a car company. I mean, you look at uh, Volkswagen and Toyota, for example, they sell 10 million units of, of gas cars per year. So 1.6 million for Tesla 
makes them you know one tenth the size of these companies. It's not a not a gigantic car company, uh, but they believe that if that's the case, Tesla's share price can go above 700 and possibly to 4,000, which is I mean that's a gigantic range. Uh, but they do ask Elon about this, and he says that his guess for 2021, and he emphasizes that it's all of his numbers in this are guesses. I'm, I'm assuming he's learned from his uh, tweeting that he should probably um, set the expectations lower and, and, and see where the market takes him. Uh, but his guess for 2021 is 1.5 million Teslas. So, and 3 million Teslas by 2023. So that's uh, a little bit ahead of w actually where ARK Investments, uh, conservative uh, investment or conservative guess was. And if if Tesla, if Elon is is close to those numbers, um, Ark definitely believes that it'll propel the stock past uh, its price target. And also, Elon Musk thinks that Tesla will have a run rate of about five hundred thousand cars by the end of this year. So in order to get to one point five million by twenty twenty one, so we'll I guess they'll have two years after that. They basically need to triple their production uh, the two years after this year. That does seem a bit ambitious, but it does seem uh, achievable, assuming that they can ramp up uh, their current uh, factory in the United States and the one in China, and possibly even by 2021, maybe they'll start building out a new factory. So it seems that this might be on the roadmap because this isn't only for Model 3s. By this time, the, the Model Y, the Tesla's electric SUV version, sort of of the Model 3 on the, on the same platform as the Model 3. Uh, so uh, if it's on the same platform, the price should actually be quite similar. Maybe it's a little bit more expensive because it's an SUV, but the Model Y should help drive Tesla's production even higher. And if they're going to be building out another factory, for example, for the Model Y, they're going to use all the lessons they learned from Model 3 and perhaps they can actually ramp up quicker, quicker and quicker, uh, which is one of the things that leads to this exponential uh, curve in the growth of their cars. And, and one thing that was asked of Elon Musk at, sort of at the end of the the podcast was would he share uh, Tesla's platform with other automakers? And he, he does laugh at this, uh, but he says that it's actually quite difficult to work with traditional automakers. Uh, they're not exactly banging on their doors, though, uh, to work with them. But he he thinks that they always uh, sort of ask for for uh, something to change about Tesla's platform in order for the for it to be compatible uh, with with what they want, and that sort of creates extra overhead, and that's that'll slow Tesla down. So they're not willing to make changes to their own platform. They sort of want them uh, to use the platform as is if they want to use uh, Tesla's platform. Uh, that said, Elon Musk does think that they have the other automakers have taken Tesla up. On the patent side of things, because Tesla open sourced their patents, they believe that the auto other automakers are actually, in fact, using their patents, which is pretty interesting, actually. I wonder what will happen if I think that sort of prevents other automakers from ever suing Tesla. So I think it's sort of a defense. If I think if an automaker sues Tesla for copying something, Tesla will right away be like, OK, well, you're not acting in good faith and we're going to sue you back for all of the patents that you've been using. So uh, it's sort of open source is everything, which is, which is kind of great uh, for, for the company. It'll sort of pre uh, prevent future lawsuits, in my opinion. But lastly, Elon Musk does conclude that he is open to sharing uh, supercharger networks, even the, the autopilot, but he doesn't want to add any extra overhead for, you know, to make uh, any trade-offs for, for any other automakers. Uh, but yeah, even the autopilot, they can use uh, the autopilot platform on their cars. Uh, provided they use it as is, like Elon or Tesla is willing to share that, which is which is pretty interesting. I think that's the first we've heard of that. Uh, Elon uh, sharing the autopilot, which is seems to be one of the most advanced ones uh, in the world right now, and we're going to talk about that right now. Okay, so the main purpose of this podcast was actually to talk about the autonomous strategy uh, for Tesla, and Elon was saying that the cars are actually sort of uh, both uh, physically and figuratively their carriers or their vehicles. Uh, for the autonomy software. So they're going to be delivering the autonomy software to customers, which I actually think alludes to like an app platform where the autonomous driving uh, strategy is sort of just a feature that's being delivered to you uh, using the car, sort of like how uh, the phone the phone feature is a feature that's being delivered to you uh, through the, the iPhone. Like like you want the you want to have a conversation, so you say okay, open the phone app, and you can you can call somebody. Uh, the same way you might be able to uh, drive the car, you'll say okay, here's the the autonomous driving app. Let's do that. 
but maybe that opens up a huge platform for all these other types of applications that you might want to use in your car. And I think Tesla's already well positioned uh, to do that. And Elon was asked, he was asked that uh, Tesla wasn't always pursuing the autonomous uh, vehicle concept. So he, he actually said that they, there will always be a human in the loop. Elon said this about, I think, six years ago or something like that. But he responds by saying that he believes that full feature complete full self-driving will be available this year in 2019. Now, uh, to be fair or to be uh, unbiased, he has said similar things before. He was saying that the car, I think it was last year, was going to drive across uh, the city without anyone touching it, uh, which and that didn't really happen. Uh, however, he also said this year that he has been testing in dev mode. Uh, in, de in his own development uh, version of the car, uh, sort of full self-driving features like stoplights and, and things like that. And it wasn't completely ready for it to be released yet, but he expects it to, to happen later this year. Perhaps the car, he says, will find you in a parking lot, pick you up and take you to your destination. So he says he's, he's certain of that. He he's definitely seems to be certain. I mean, he is testing it out. He does manage the autopilot engineering team every week. So he says he's He's completely certain of this. Um, so again, keep in mind Elon's uh, timelines, uh, but it will still require observation from humans and verifying and checking and making sure it works. So just because it's released, it doesn't mean uh, that it's ready for everybody to sort of close their eyes and, and go to sleep and let their cars drive them around. Uh, the regulators won't approve that right away. It'll take them a little bit longer. And just because something is feature complete, uh, doesn't mean it has sort of five nines of reliability, like 99.999% reliability, which is uh, extremely high, but it might not even be high enough for something that has your your life in its hands, basically, the, the self-driving car. So so we'll see when they're they're sort of confident enough to, to make sure that this thing is safer than humans, for sure. And he thinks that the car will actually be full self-driving by the end of next year. So... Uh, he says he's not sure if regulators will agree with that, but he says that they're uh, they're more conservative in Europe, for example, but a little less in, in China and US, so they might actually be closer to allowing it, assuming that they can prove um, that it's safer than, than a human. Uh, so I think that's a pretty bold statement. I know Elon has said certain things that he, he's been certain of before and, and haven't come to fruition, but, uh, but that definitely, this is definitely something that gives confidence uh, to uh, investors that there will be uh, some sort of self, almost feature complete self-driving uh, version of the car uh, later this year. So at least it'll be, be more advanced as to where it is right now. Now, one huge advantage that Tesla has, and I think Elon has touched on this before and the latest uh, conference call actually, uh, was that Tesla has a huge amount of, of data from all of its cars that are on the road. They're, they're constantly uh, monitoring and collecting da data uh, anonymously for all the drivers that are driving. And he says that Tesla has a huge amount of interventions from, from human drivers intervening with the autopilot. So there's millions of corner cases. He says there's rain, snow, hurricanes, floods, fire, smoke, dust, hail, and sleet, and all these different things. And every time somebody intervenes uh, with the car, it'll it'll save this information and tell Tesla anonymously. It'll be, it'll be uploaded to Tesla and Tesla will be able to see what's required to fix that intervention so that it doesn't need to happen again. And he says that humans don't even need to label uh, sort of these interactions anymore. Uh, labeling is sort of a human telling the computer uh, what, the, what the answer is and the computer sort of learning from that. But he says that that's not really required anymore. The human is basically now training the autopilot what to do using uh, the neural network that's, that's going to be running in the car. And he goes on about neural networks and touches on LIDAR, which is the, uh, which is, uh, LIDAR is sort of like radar. I mean, we talked about this before in another video, but it uses light instead. So it, it can basically see the same things that a, a camera could see, but the, uh, what you get back is sort of a three dimensional representation of the world around you. So it, it's quite accurate at figuring out the shape of things around you, but it can't go through, um, objects that radar can go through. Like you can't, you can't see like a car ahead of you, for example, or anything like that. So he says that LiDAR gets you to a, a local maximum uh, when referring to the capability of the car, which is it, it sort of gets you to uh, the best possible thing that maybe LiDAR could do, but not a global maximum. And he doesn't really say this, but you probably need other sensors as well. Like, for example, 
for radar if you can see with if you can see through other cars in front of you and see like one step ahead of yourself and train the the machine uh, the algorithm that's uh, the, the neural net that's going to be running to incorporate this into its sort of driving strategy you can definitely be even better than than this lidar because lidar will only sort of get you to where cameras are today a camera should technically uh, be very close to where lidar is and he says that humans have have cameras i mean they're basically their eyes are like cameras and if humans can do it he says even like a professional driver shouldn't be shouldn't have to get into any car accidents so a superhuman computer which is driving your car also should have like a, a perfect driving record uh, but in order for this to occur you definitely need a sophisticated neural net and he says that lidar is is an unwise choice because it gets you to a certain point but it doesn't get you any further than that so that's pretty interesting he says just a bunch of if then else statements in lidar like uh, if this is a person stop here like is, if you're just using ifs and else is like you're not going to get very far he says that's game over you definitely need to solve the problem of, of having a vision and perception and actually an understanding of the road and he believes that a neural net can do that and neural nets have been proven to to do that for narrow ai applications uh, such as the google ai uh, learning go for example but but definitely the millions of weird events that tesla's sort of collecting is their their huge advantage that's sort of like the tail end of the curve that he's talking about these are all the the strange one-off events that occur these are all being trained into the neural net and the neural net should be able to uh, learn all of these edge cases. He also says that the other thing that people aren't really uh, talking about is that the autopilot AI computer uh, is about to roll into production. There's going to be a 20 times improvement over the NVIDIA computer. So they've replaced NVIDIA and they've put in their own custom chip. Uh, custom chips of course, like the, the hardware is dedicated to processing these these neural network type calculations. So that's how you can get the 20 times improvement. And ARC Investments actually says that they have an NVIDIA specialist on the team, somebody who used to work at NVIDIA for nine years. And he was saying that uh, Tesla is three years ahead of anyone else. I'm not sure how they calculate that, but that's probably in their model. But basically the problem with the NVIDIA computer was that they could probably still solve the uh, the problem of having uh, self-driving cars with that but they had to sort of lower the resolutions of some cameras because it, it wasn't able to take the full capacity of having all the cameras run at full resolution at full frames all the time whereas the new computer that they're putting in is capable of doing that and that way you shouldn't really have to upgrade this again further uh if if the camera can sort of take this this capacity and it's not even slowing down at this point so it seems that they can still go a bit further if they needed to like add another camera for example uh, but they won't need to with this this new chip and it's going to be coming in for all the cars that have the uh, full self-driving uh, capabilities but yeah so he he does say that with the nvidia card they sort of needed to budget uh for like you know the software uh, not really uh, being as fast. It, it's it's kind of slow interacting with the hardware and they need to sort of change the hardware uh, so that the software would work. Uh, but he says with the new hardware, hardware 3.0, they might be able to get to uh, like a thousand times safer than a human versus the maybe twice as, as safe as a human with the, with the NVIDIA card. And basically Tesla is adding uh, more and more different, uh, I guess, areas in terms of self-driving they did start with the the highway because it is the most uh, beneficial for congested freeways i think that's something that was important to elon he says he, he takes the highway now and he doesn't even use ways anymore to to direct him to a, a faster route because because the tesla can uh sort of self-drive it has autopilot for the highway he doesn't he doesn't even care he he'll he'll take the highway even if it's slower because he doesn't really need to interact with the car uh to get to where he needs to go and it also seems that Tesla is adding uh, these other features in, in Elon's dev mode again, which uh, he says should be uh, ready by the end of this year uh, in terms of feature complete. That doesn't mean all the bugs are, are complete, but, but feature complete means uh, that the overall feature is there. It just hasn't been completely ironed out yet. So that's pretty exciting. I mean, ARK Investments does invest in innovative technologies. We actually have another video where we talk about uh, their top 10 stocks for their uh, investments for, the, for 2019. But again, they, they are taking uh, big risks in investing in sort of high multiple stocks that have huge growth. And they're definitely very bullish on the stocks that they own, uh, specifically Tesla as well. Uh, so definitely, I mean, do your own research before you invest in any of the companies that they're investing in. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Your support is super appreciated and smash that like button.